Hello, and welcome to the Chemie Corner. I'm Bubble Point Becca, and today we're here to talk to you about two component phase diagrams. What do you think about that, Dewpoint Dora? I feel pretty solid on that topic. We could keep it basic and use just one component, but what's the excitement in that? Uh oh, looks like Barometer Brandon's giving me a boiling look. I just don't think engineering is something to joke about, guys. Oh, well, I guess our opinions aren't in. Equilibrium! Margul's Marty, what's wrong? I don't get it. Do you residual, Ryan? Yeah. How do you not? You've worked here for like, what, 10 years? Let's spin the wheel of components to find out today's mixture. Looks like the first component is rainbows. And sparkles is next. Yay. Sparkles and rainbows? Utter nonsense! All you do is utter nonsense, barometer Brandon! Oh look, a graph. Good job, Margulies Marty. Dom and Visco define a system to be in equilibrium when there is no driving force or any change to its state properties. This two-component phase diagram represents the state of a system of rainbows and sparkles at equilibrium at a single pressure and a range of temperatures that minimizes the Gibbs free energy of the mixture. The x-axis represents the fraction of rainbows. The y-axis represents temperature in swags. Phase diagrams must be drawn at constant pressure or constant temperature. This one has constant pressure and measured in... Ugh, who chose these units of pressure? That was me. Happy holidays. We start at point A. This point is in a one-phase region, a miscible liquid mixture of rainbows and sparkles. The fraction of rainbows can be read directly from the x-axis and is 0.25. The fraction of sparkles is 1 minus the fraction of rainbows, 0.75. Since there is only liquid present, the liquid composition is the same as the total composition. Going from point A to B represents a gradual decrease in temperature. What do those curved lines represent? The curved lines represent the point of melting or freezing, depending on direction traveled, for a mixture of sparkles and rainbows over a range of compositions. Once we reach the curved line, the first crystal of sparkles appears. Point B represents the beginning of the two-phase equilibrium region, solid sparkles and a liquid mixture. At this point, we have to read the composition of both phases. To do so, we draw a line parallel to the x-axis across the curved region called a tie line, pretending the point is an infinitesimally small distance below the curved line. The intersection of this tie line with the curve gives us the composition of the liquid phase, and the intersection between this horizontal line and the y-axis gives us the composition of the solid phase. For regions with multiple phases in equilibrium, we can determine the relative amount of each phase using the lever rule. If the distance between your point and the curve is less than the distance between your point and the y-axis, there is more liquid than solid present. Drawing a line straight down from point B gives us the total composition of the mixture. The fraction of rainbows in the liquid mixture is approximately 25%, and that of sparkles is 75%. For the solid phase, since the line intersects the axis that represents zero rainbows, the solid is pure sparkles. The total composition is still 25% rainbows and 75% sparkles, and since the amount of solid is so small, we can assume that the liquid composition is approximately equal to the total composition. Once we cross this curved line, we are still in the two-phase equilibrium region composed of solid sparkles and a liquid mixture of sparkles and rainbows. We determine the composition of these two phases like previously. We draw the tie line that crosses point C. The composition of the solid phase remains pure sparkles. The composition of the liquid phase can be read from the intersection of the tie line with the curve. In the liquid mixture, the composition of rainbows is about 0.3 and that of sparkles is about 0.7. Our overall composition of 25% rainbows and 75% sparkles remains the same. At point D, the liquid mixture reaches its specific freezing point based on its composition. At this temperature, both components, sparkles and rainbows, crystallize. We theoretically have three phases at this point. Again, a horizontal line that crosses D can be drawn. This line is also known as the eutectic temperature line. The composition of the liquid phase is represented by the intersection between the horizontal line and the curve. In the liquid mixture, the fraction of rainbows is about 0.34, and that of sparkles is about 0.66.
However, overall composition still has not changed. At point E, we are technically in two-phase equilibrium, but we cannot know if the solid phases are distinguishable from each other based on this graph. We only know that the entire mixture is solidified and has some, the same overall composition that it always has. Let's try a couple of multiple choice questions. First, what do these points represent? It's a B, right? Actually, yes. At these points, we have pure solid sparkles and pure solid rainbows as indicated by the x-axis. Therefore, these must be their normal melting points. Let's do another one. What is this point and what does it represent? It's A, obviously. Nice guess, Marty. Actually, I didn't guess. The eutectic point of this graph is defined as the exact point where a three-phase equilibrium exists. A single liquid phase is an equilibrium with two solid phases, which in this case are the sparkles and rainbows. The composition of the liquid mixture phase can be read from point F in the liquid mixture. The composition of rainbows is about 0.34 and that of sparkles is about 0.66. If the solids are separate, one is pure rainbows and one is pure sparkles. What? The... the... Did you, where did this come from, Marty? Well, they hired me to be the dumb one, but the truth is, I'm smart and I'm tired of everyone looking down on me. So, I quit. Come back, Marty. I always had faith in you. I love thermodynamics. Anyways, be sure to tune in next week for our next topic, Reaction Coordinates. Hopefully we can come up with reactions a little less violent than Margul's Marty.